In this video, I will be upgrading the inflatable sleep sack I built by adding an additional air chamber. If you'd like to see how I made the one I am showing now, check out the card above or the link in the description. With two chambers of the same size, it did not work as intended. While it could definitely squeeze an occupant inside, it could not really suspend them. When the lower chamber was inflated enough to lift the occupant, they would be pressed uncomfortably against the uninflated top chamber. If trying to carefully balance how much air was put in both, the occupant would always end up tilted on their head. This sleep sack worked best rotated 90 degrees, with the occupant straddling another inflatable, such as the Simtex Whale. The chambers would be on the left and right instead of above and below them. Still, balance was difficult. To make this upgrade, I will be using a third dunnage bag as a basic building block. If you aren't familiar with a dunnage bag, they are large inflatables that come in a variety of sizes used to fill empty space in a shipping container or semi-truck trailer. Filling empty space in transit helps prevent the other items from moving around. In my case, it will prevent the occupant from moving around. These bright blue dunnage bags are from Uline and are sold directly in packs of 10 and can usually be found individually on eBay and the like for between 10 and $20. These ones specifically are made from a soft and supple 0.25mm thick vinyl with a nice soft touch matte finish. Perfect for my intended use. A vinyl dunnage bag is a cheap, large, fun and bouncy inflatable all by itself. 10 out of 10 would definitely recommend. This one is 7 feet long and 3 feet wide. To start the upgrade process, I must first cut apart one of the seams I bonded in the previous video. Using my extra heavy duty scissors, I cut through the multiple vinyl layers. I will install the new dunnage bag along the two edges that I am cutting apart. With the seam now cut, I position one side of the cut along the center of my work table. The one dunnage bag sits on the far side of the table, with the second one dangling off the far side onto the floor. I have positioned the third dunnage bag, the new one, on the near side of the table with one of its long edges aligned with the first old bag. I use some wide electrical tape to temporarily seam the old bag and the new bag together. With the seam temporarily taped together, I flip the assembly over. Interestingly, the new dunnage bag appears to be a few inches longer than the old ones. However, I proceed despite the length discrepancy. Just like in my previous video, I use strips of vinyl I cut from an old busted air mattress. I use HH66 vinyl cement and the brush attached to the can lid to glue the strips down, bonding the bags together. I glue the seam quite quickly. This seam does not need to be airtight or particularly strong. I am also not worried about the seam's appearance either, so I am working fast. I use the bottom of a glass baking dish as a non-stick surface to slather glue onto the back of the strip, just prior to bonding the wetted section down. Due to the quantity of glue, I am working outside with a fan directly to my left blowing away the noxious fumes. Off camera, I finish seaming the rest of this side, flip the assembly over, remove the electrical tape, and replace the electrical tape with additional vinyl strips bonded to that side of the seam. Bonding a strip to both sides of the seam is probably overkill, but that is what I did before. The excessive amount of glue will take a bit longer to dry, but I let it air out for a couple hours. With the first of the two new seams complete, the three dunnage bags are attached. To show the partially complete assembly, I go ahead and bring it inside and inflate all three chambers. It looks like a super-sized pool mat. To not bore you, I skip showing the bonding of the final seam. I glue the leftmost and rightmost edges together off camera. I again use the electrical tape to temporarily hold the seam together while I bond a strip of vinyl to the opposite side. I then go back and replace the electrical tape with a second strip of vinyl just like I did for all the other seams. I would suggest that anything with this much glue applied be inflated and deflated outside a few times to help it air out. Finally, with the assembly complete, it is time to test it out. I go back and forth trying to inflate the chambers somewhat evenly. Ultimately, this upgraded three-chamber design works much better than the two-chamber version. The occupant can be comfortably suspended, immobile but not crushed, and without being unbalanced or awkwardly tilted. This squeezer is quite roomy at about 3 feet in diameter and 7 feet long. 
I hope my video has piqued your interest. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Consider subscribing, and if you would like to support my channel, consider buying a t-shirt from the link in the description. Thanks for watching.